I'm looking very much forward to have a hopefully very controversial presentation by our next presenter who really needs no introduction. John Bix is a famous writer, blogger, book author, maker, and probably a hundred things which I forgot to say. Um, so I'm very much glad that you made it all the way from New York to join us here and share your perspective on how to build a company through an ICO or how to not build a company through an ICO. So thank you very much for making it here. Please give a big round of applause to John Biggs. Thank you. Audio, audio, is it working? Oh, okay. All right, great. Does this work? All right, perfect. So I'm John Biggs from TechCrunch. Um, I live in New York, I hate San Francisco, I enjoy Romania, I had a very delicious, um, it's like a chicken paprikash or something like that, with like sour cream, it was orange, which is good, I didn't want the, I didn't want the red one. Um, so what I'm going to tell you about is the history of startups and ICOs. So I have three things to tell you, that ICOs are here to stay, that all of them are awful, and that you should or shouldn't do one depending on your risk aversion and fear of jail, all right? So I have three things to talk about. So where did all this stuff come from? So we started TechCrunch. Uh, I was one of the first editors of TechCrunch. Mike Arrington started it because he and all of his investor buddies would get together and they'd talk about deals. And the deals that we talk about today weren't the deals that they talked about back in the old days. Back in the old days, you had like a... Uh, a deal was basically somebody who wanted to make a tuna fish factory in, I don't know, Alaska. I don't know if they have tuna in Alaska. Um, a jelly bean factory in Romania. And they needed some money. So they would go to a bank, they'd put on a suit, which is very difficult for us to understand. Suits are similar to what I'm wearing now, but you had a tie usually. Um, and no jeans and no New Balance. Uh, so if you, went into a, if you went into a meeting, uh, this is actually an interesting story. I had a friend who had a, he went into a meeting, and it was a very proper meeting, everybody was gonna, he was gonna get money, but he, this guy wanted out of the contract. So instead of saying all the normal things you used to say back in the 90s and early 2000s, like, sir, would you like another coffee? Your secretary is quite attractive, et cetera, et cetera. This guy said bugs in the middle of the meeting. And he wanted to communicate with aliens. So the result was he got out of the contract fairly easily. Now, feasibly, if you're a startup owner and founder, you could say bugs and I believe in aliens all day long and nobody would care, which is a real big change. So you had a situation, it was very formal, getting cash was very difficult, and the world kind of sucked, especially for small startups. What were the ways you could be a startup? You could go work for Samsung, uh, or you could go work for Philips, or you could go work for a big company, become an inventor within that organization, work your way up the ranks, get a pension, and then die. That's basically your only option. If you want to do a startup, you really couldn't. You could work inside of a bank. You could do something cool inside of a bank. There's nothing cool inside of a bank. Um, and then die. And then there's a couple options. To get cash, you had to put on your suit, you had to go ask somebody for a million dollars to make a jelly bean factory, and they would give it to you. And that piece of news, that jelly bean factory funding, would end up in a very small column in the local newspaper of jelly bean lovers or whatever, uh, that this jelly bean factory got a million dollars. And then you just built your jelly bean factory and you were happy. Now, today, everybody gets news written about them if they raise 50 cents. Why did this happen? Okay, and this is important because I'm trying to, how many of us understand ICOs and like them? Like two, these guys right here, and you. So congratulations, you're my new ICO team. Romanian, who can do so we can start a little, uh, you guys can leave. Uh, we'll start a little users group. So what these guys had to do is they had to socialize them to a new way of thinking. This new way of thinking came about in about 2000, during the dot-com boom. So you had Andreessen, you had Jason Calacanis, you had all these weirdos who, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Tim Draper and his son Adam, uh, a couple other guys who were upset with the way investment was going. And they had gotten investment via the old way where you put on a suit, but eventually they stopped wearing suits and they were still getting money. So they figured, hey, let's change this up a little bit. So what they needed to do was create an entirely new system for fundraising. So what they did is they went to Mike 
and said, hey, Mike, can you cover this little tiny startup that just, I just gave $50,000 to? And Mike would write about it, then I would write about it, and people would write about it. And it became sort of a story, these rock star VCs coming in and saving the day for some small startup. And the jelly bean factory that had to raise a million dollars could now basically just go to Tim Draper or, I don't know, Mark Cuban or one of these weirdos and get a million dollars. And that was the whole story. That was, that was how that worked. And they did it very specifically so everybody could get in on deals instead of just the big banks. So Mark Cuban wanted to get in on Twitter. Back in the 90s, if Twitter had gone to raise money, the only people who would have made money were the banks. And now Mark Cuban could do it. And now Chris Saka, now whatever. Zuckerberg, these kids. So what we did at TechCrunch is we sort of normalized that process. We created this whole v ecosystem where the VC's always right, the VC's great. How many VC's are there? Oh, good, because they're, they're awful. Uh, no, there's none? Good, that really tells you a lot about the ecosystem. When none of the VC's show up to the biggest startup thing in Cluj, that means... Uh, they, they, they had the startup competition upstairs. Oh, good. Oh, oh okay. There is, there is VC, so I'll, right. I'll prove you wrong on that side. All right, all right. <laughs> so they suck anyway. They're not here. Um, VCs are awful. VCs are implicitly awful um, because their mission is to make as much money off of you as possible. Getting VC funding is like getting a bank loan, uh, the, the, basically the mental equivalent of a bank loan. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm not just being terrible for, for no reason. Um, so you create an entire way of socializing startups. And the socialization of startups created was done through accelerators and through incubators and through WeWorks and all this other garbage where you're supposed to put like a little kitten on your wall that says Kang in there and that, that starting is the first step to your future and you're supposed to put a bunch of LinkedIn garbage on your, on your wall to say that you're, you're killing it today with all your, I don't know, MOUs and that Gary Vaynerchuk's a smart guy, et cetera, et cetera. And you created this whole, this whole environment of can-do attitude because VC, raising VC was so awful. That's exactly why that's, this happened. That's why you see all these medium posts about like fighting through pain is the easiest way to make, raise $50 million. And it's by some dude who's like, I don't know, whose father has $50 million and gave it to him. Uh, that's why all this stuff happens because it's such a terrible experience. I don't know if you've done it. I'm, John Biggs from TechCrunch. I can walk into a room and people want to talk to me. I'm not saying that because I have an ego. I'm just saying that because I've done this for 12 years and I talk a lot and I am, I just, whatever. Uh, if you guys tried that, they'd be like, ah, oh, hi, I'm from like, I'm Vlad from Romania. And they'd be like, what, huh? And it's really, really frustrating to me. It drives me absolutely nuts because it's so stupid. You guys have great ideas. People in, I don't know, Macedonia have great ideas. Do you guys like the Macedonians? You guys are, yeah, whatever. It's, they're all right. I don't know what the Balkan, who, who hates who in the Balkans anymore. Um, and you got all this other good stuff. And this creation of a socialization around this whole process of pitching VCs, the whole idea that you have to have a pitch deck, that you have to go and sit down, you have to have an elevator pitch, you have to go, you should go to Disrupt. I'm going to tell you that because they need more people there, actually, quite literally. So if you ask me, I can get you discounts or something. Uh, but all these startup things that exist, are primarily designed to socialize entrepreneurs into this world of VC, to make them palatable to a VC, to one dude in Palo Alto who wants nothing more uh, to do in his day than ride his bike really, really far. That's all he wants to do. He doesn't want to talk to startups. But he has to talk to startups because of his job, and then at night he rides his bike all over the place. That's literally how they are. Okay, so we have that understanding. VCs are charming people with many flaws, all right? So then we have this ICO thing, and this ICO thing came out of multi-level marketing and penis pill sales. That's where it's all from. And money laundering, which is also a good thing. So you really have, you really have a triumvirate of excellent objects to work with here. So I've, de I've dealt with three ICOs in the past, few year, past year or so. I've been an advisor, I've done some other stuff, and I've watched all this stuff go off the rails. But I truly believe for various reasons, that this is the future of fundraising. This is a wildly important aspect of fundraising. And if you guys aren't ready for doing ICOs, you guys should start thinking about how you can do them in your own milieu, in your own country, and how to do them best. Because they're vitally important for you guys. You guys will not get seed. There's one dude in here who's gonna get seed, because he's a physics, 
I don't know, genius, and he's figured out how to put, I don't know, rocket engines on cats, and he's going to get $5 billion, and he'll be fine. The rest of you all, and me, are kind of screwed. So we've got to figure out a way to work around this, right? So the best ICOs that I've seen are run by founders with technical background, another guy who has some business background, and, a, uh, and essentially a blockchain uh, programmer. So do that, be a blockchain programmer, because the world needs more of those. And I'm serious. Now, the worst ones are basically a marketer, another marketer, the marketer's friend, another guy who's kind of a marketer, and some guy who runs a bar. Those are the worst ones. And these usually end up in Russia, um, which they're beautiful people, wonderful, wonderful culture, literature, food. I enjoy a, what's a, what's a Russian food? Borscht. Borscht? Yeah, perfect. Beautiful people. And I've realized that I've started to sound like Trump as I get older, which is really scary. But I try to do this off the cuff and be friendly, which is what he's trying to do. But he's a horrible man, and I'm just me. Um, so the ICO is vitally important. How does an ICO work? I'm going to explain in very short terms, because I only have eight minutes. But, and I've, I've written about this before. What you guys have to do to do an ICO, do we all understand generally the, the concept of the cryptocurrency, yes? It's a, it's a token associated with another currency that is kind of cut off and made into smaller tokens. So I basically take a certain amount of ether or a certain amount of cryptocurrency. I would recommend using Stellar, which is a different cryptocurrency now. It's a different one. Uh, that is converted into a sort of a smart contract. And this is really hard to do without slides and without me being awful and boring. So I'm just going to kind of hand wave through it. So then you have 5 million of these tokens, or 50 million of these tokens. And each one of these tokens is worth zero money, absolute zero. There's, no, there's no, literally no worth. Because what you are saying to your buyer, that I am going to create an infrastructure that is going to use these tokens. The, the example that I give is it's basically a casino that sells the chips to buyers before it opens. And it sells them at a wild discount. The other way to think about it, that's more of a security token. The other way to think about it is a utility token where, let's say I have a self-driving car, and the self-driving cars are constantly, being ne are constantly next to each other. And this car wants to go faster than this car. So this car pays this car five cents to get ahead of it. And it does that consistently as it's moving around. It's sort of a way to control a system that has uh, no controls, essentially. It's a, it's the, the, the system there is you're basically treating it as a utility token. You guys getting this? These, down, these two down here? You guys, it's OK? You're front row, dude. <laughs> I see you. That's what, I mean, I, I, I do it too. I'm an asshole too, but it's all right. Um, so, these utility tokens, sorry if this is boring, I can keep going. The utility token is, is what you sell, right? You sell it for, you sell, it has zero value, you sell it for five cents, and then the people who buy it from you sell it for seven cents. That's an, that's an ICO entirely. Now what does that sound like? That sounds like a Ponzi scheme, right? Yes, it does. But, <laughs> the great thing is, it's not really a Ponzi scheme because these people have gone into it and they've done it uh, intelligently and they've made correct decisions all throughout. So your goal here is to figure out a framework for ICOs in Romania. Don't, don't depend on Russia, don't depend on the US, don't, depend, don't go to Malta or Luxembourg or whatever else you, all these guys are going right now for all their money laundering activities. You gotta figure it out for yourselves. Because what I'm really talking about is not a crazy money scam where five cents turns into seven cents, turns into 10 cents, and then goes back down to zero. What I'm talking about is actually a form of equity crowdfunding that anybody can do. The way I associate this, the way I think about this, is that this is like Linux back in 98. Uh, and back in 98, you would buy a CD, you'd put it in your computer, you'd run KDE, you were happy, you were excited about it. Nobody knew that Linux was going to take off. The only way to install a web server was to buy an actual server, put it in your suitcase, take it to Budapest, and stick it into a server rack. Now, all you have to do is press a button and Linux just spins up. So, the same thing is going to hold true of this new funding system. It's really hard to explain the new funding system in four minutes and 30 seconds. However, 
I want you to understand that this is the next thing. I saw the first thing. I saw when VCs became rock stars. We all saw when VCs became rock stars. We saw when all these events popped up, when all the socialization of founders popped up, when all these big changes to the way we raised money, where you went from a suit to jeans and a hoodie to I don't know what you're going to be wearing soon. You're going to be wearing like, I don't know, uh, Yeezys and some kind of weird uh, urban tactical jacket to go raise money. And it's all changing. Now, I would love for every single country, and I would love for every single one of you guys to think about this honestly. Don't treat it like a bunch of garbage. Because in the same minute, back in 2006, all the guys who saw Twitter and Facebook raising all this money treated it like a bunch of garbage. They said, oh, these guys are stupid. It's never going to work. Now, everybody wants VC. Everybody wants to go to institutions. Same kind of thing is happening right now. And if we all don't take, <laughs> take control of it intelligently, and not just make it a bunch of MLM scammers making $60 million overnight. Uh, the best story that I have is there was this guy in Russia, or no, it was in, Swi in Switzerland. It's a Russian guy, and he told me that he raised $60 million. $80 million, I'm sorry. Now, with $80 million, you could feasibly go to Mars, I think. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure how far away Mars is, but it's, it's entirely feasible that you could build some sort of rocket and you would die in it, but otherwise you'd be fine. And I said to him, what are you going to do? How many Aeron chairs and IMAX do you really need in your life? And he says, oh, we're going to be very fiscally responsible. Fiscally responsible. I don't think it's going to happen. So what I think is going to happen is we're going to end up with an ICO situation where you have a small group of crazy people who raise $60 million. How do they do it? They do exactly what I said. They sell for five cents. They promise their investors it for six cents. And then they go back up and down, they give people discounts, and it's all kind of shady, shystery movements back and forth. And then they make their $6 million overnight because they've already convinced whales, people with millions and millions of dollars in crypto, to invest in them. That's really hard to do, and it requires you to sell your soul to Satan to even attempt it. However, you can do smaller rounds. You can create smaller ICOs. And if you're smart enough to figure out actual utility tokens, the kind of car-to-car -car sort of situation that I was talking about before, then you're even in, you're in doubly luck because that you're basically free from uh, financial investigations on that front. So please, if you take anything away from this, it's that I'm a horrible person uh, for yelling at these poor two ladies, and that the ICO is the next one. There's lots of people who are going to tell you that, yeah, you got to go for 60 million one, you got to go nuts, everybody's got to do ICO. I'm saying that take it slow and steady, figure it out, because if this is the ideal place for something like an ICO, you guys can't get funding, it's not going to happen. There's plenty of VCs, the VCs are upstairs, even if you went in there and you told them that you would steal their children away from them, they would just nod, just not enough to say that yes, but just kind of nod, and then you never hear from them again. I assure you this is going to happen. Therefore, take matters into your own hands and figure out how to do ICOs on your own terms here in Romania uh, and in Central Europe because it's vitally important. It's the way that you guys are going to get your innovations out in the world. And it's a massive undertaking and it's a massive change in the way we get funding. So that's all I have to say about that. Sorry if I rambled a little bit and sorry if I'm really dumb technically, but I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much, John. So, all right. you'll be also available for live uh, Q&A right after this in the Q&A room. Okay, where's so that? I think um, somebody is going to get you right, there. Cool. Right. But I have the feeling there's a lot of people about this, all this like controversial stuff that definitely want to like yeah, hammer okay. you and say like, no, I believe you're wrong. So Don't I think that's going to be a good conversation. Thank you very right, much, John, for making it. That was um, a very interesting talk.